Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well. And uh, in this short video, I will talk about the new Postman presentation. So that is basically your next assignment and the due date is May 21st. And just remember that the new Postman presentation is a group presentation. Okay. So the instructions for the new Postman presentations are here under assignments. Okay. Now when you read through it, uh, don't worry about week six because um, this is from a regular semester. Uh, from the last winter semester. So don't worry about that. We have our own due dates because we are on a different schedule, but uh, the rest of the instructions are, are more or less the same. Here, uh, I have given you tips on how to create a PowerPoint presentation, how to turn a PowerPoint presentation into a video presentation because the new Postman presentation is a video presentation. And here are some tips from my previous students that have worked uh, well. So you can follow these and also uh, under PowerPoint, you also have options um, in Office and in PowerPoint, you also have options of doing voiceovers. So if you want to um, do PowerPoints with voiceovers, you are welcome to do so. You can you also use Prezi to do that. If you want to turn your PowerPoints into a video presentation, here are instructions on how to do that. This is the marking, uh, marking rubric. So each uh, presentation is divided into five ideas because the new Postman presentation is on, um, on new Postman's article uh, entitled uh, five things to know about technological change in which Neil Postman talks about five ideas. Um, and so this rubric is divided uh, in such a fashion so that each idea you explain, you apply is marked. So ideally you, there will be five students in your, in your uh, group and each student will present on um, one idea that is spelled out in the target article. And I will go to the target target article in uh, a minute. But but first, I just I want to explain the, the rubric to you in a little bit more detail. So um, for each idea, idea number one, two, three, four, and five, each student for his or her idea, whichever idea it is, anywhere from one to five, um, will be marked according to this rubric. So first you will explain the idea and then you will apply this idea to the technology you have chosen as a group. And then I will mark your delivery. So for example, if your group chose to be uh, if you are in the in the group if you are in the self-driving group or some other group doesn't really which group um, here I just go I'm just going to the groups to to show you again make sure you here you change the category from assignment number two which I will update uh, shortly but go to postman presentation groups and here you will see the groups with specific, uh, with specific technologies, okay? So each group is responsible for covering one technology, one specific technology. So group number one is doing self-driving cars. Group number two is doing CRISPR gene editing. Group number three is working on artificial intelligence like Siri, Watson, or Google, pick one or pick a couple if you want. You can cho choose to talk about one or two or all three at the same time if you, if possible. If not, then one is perfectly fine and so on. So 
I can see that students are are, are uh, signing up, which is good. We need uh, this should fill up very quickly because you need to connect with your group members ASAP and start working on your presentations. So group number one, self-driving cars. This is all. This is filled up. We have five students. And uh, group number seven is basically an extra topic for those. Uh, for those, for those uh, left without a group. Well, here's a small typo, I will change it. And this is on robotics, uh, artificial intelligence, and specifically robotics, such as Boston Dynamics or Honda's Asimo. So if there are any students left over, then they can go into uh, to this group, group seven, but the first the six groups should be enough. Okay. Now, here I have also created a document for you based on um, feedback from my students from previous semesters, steps for group video presentations. And these have worked well. So use these as well to uh, construct your video presentations. Now the target article is under technology and ethics. This is the tar target article, five things we need to know about technological change. Here, five ideas about technological change by Neil Postman. Here you will find a com commentary and uh, also lectures by Neil Postman on some of his ideas. Okay, so as you can see, idea number one, technology is a trade-off, you have explanation examples. So you are required to read this as an additional commentary to help you understand what Neil Postman means by the five ideas uh, in, the target, in the target article. So let me go to the target article. So five things we need to know about the technological change. Uh, I suggest you read this document uh, at least uh, twice or three times. You won't understand everything right away. If you need to look up something, then uh, do, do so. Again, the commentaries that are included in the lesson will additionally help. So, as you can see, the article is divided into five ideas. And the five ideas are basically critiques or philosophical commentaries on technology and technological and use of technology in our society. So, uh, for example, the first idea is that technology, the first idea is that all technological change is a trade off. That is, each technology produces advantages and disadvantages. So for example, you know, cars uh, can be wonderful. They are used to, to commute. They are used to, um, to move between a, point A and point B much faster than walking. Um, they are quite a convenience. You can hop into your car or someone else's car and basically go anywhere you want, whenever you want, as long as there are roads to take you there. Um, but the trade-off is, traffic, uh, pollution, accidents, you know, a car can kill you and but a car can also save your life. So as you can see, uh, each technology, whatever it is, anything really, is basically a trade off, it creates advantages and disadvantages uh, immediately, as it is introduced into a society. Second idea is that technology creates winners and losers in society. So that the advantages um, and disadvantages of a given technology are not distributed equally in society, okay? So, you know, any example, uh, you can use basically uh, any example here, but the, if you want to use the car example, then um, you, can see, you can definitely see that people who create, design, manufacture, um, 
cars are the winners because they create and sell cars. So, for example, corporations like uh, Toyota or BMW or um, or other car companies are in the business of making cars, and they are at the forefront. Um, of the industry and therefore they reap the most benefits. And, um, you know, if someone is a truck driver, of course they also benefit because their job is tied directly to driving or driving a car or in this case, a truck, okay? But there are some people who are at a disadvantage because uh, cars exist, okay? So uh, again, the benefits of a given technology and disadvantages of a given technology um, will not be dist distributed equally. So, uh, you know, if cars uh, pollute our climate, pollute our earth, then many people, are, many people are also at a disadvantage. If you're in a hurry and you're in a car and you're stuck in a traffic jam, then you are in a disadvantage. Uh, because initially it's supposed to be about convenience and moving quickly from A to B. But what good is a car if you can't drive it, if you can't move uh, freely with it uh, because you were stuck in a traffic jam or um, because uh, a car is polluting your neighborhood or because of your car. Um, we build more roads, therefore there's less parks, less trees. Uh, so you can very quickly see that cars can, can uh, benefit some people, uh, but uh, at the same time, uh, they create drawbacks and take away from our environment and from other people. Idea number three is that each technology behind or in each technology there are a few, at least one or, or more ideas, uh, powerful ideas uh, driving that technology. So um, again, the idea behind the car is to move freely, to drive on a road, to go from A to B uh, conveniently, whenever, whenever one uh, desires, as long as they have uh, the power to do so. That is, if they have access to fossil fuels or electricity in the case of electric cars. So uh, the main idea behind a car is convenience and expedience, and you could say freedom. So there are three ideas here, right? Uh, and you can look at uh, any technology from, from the perspective of um, the third idea. Uh, you can, you know, social media, for instance, uh, what, are the, what are the most important or most basic, most fundamental driving ideas behind social media? Well, it is about human interaction. Um, social media really doesn't have any power or traction if, if no one uses it. So if Facebook has no users, it uh, ceases to be or it dies. You know, the idea is to share information. Whether the, whether the consequences of sharing information on social media is good or bad, that's a different story. That is, you know, whether the information, whether the activity, uh, the communi communicative activity that people engage in in social media is, is beneficial or healthy in our lives is a separate issue. Okay, but, but uh, first and foremost, such platforms are about sharing information, okay? So the moment people stop posting on social media is the moment when social media dies. So you can say that one of the most powerful ideas behind social media is uh, to share a platform, to create a platform where people share their personal life, their personal lives, whatever it may be, uh, with other people. And the more the merrier. Fourth idea is that uh, technology is not additive, but it is ecological. So what this means is that uh, technology, a given technology like a cell phone or a computer that I'm working on right now, it's not just an addition to our lives, but it becomes an intricate part of our lives. So again, 
you know, to use an example of a computer, when I wake up in the morning, I open the computer and I go to my mailbox uh, or email uh, and I check whether students have written anything to me, whether, you know, students have any questions. Uh, I look for correspondence, emails from, uh, from my coworkers or from my uh, immediate uh, bosses. So, uh, so my work, especially now during a pandemic, uh, would be impossible without a computer. So you can see that the computer is not just an addition to my life, the computer has become a permanent part of my daily routine, just like the fridge, just like the stove, um, and just like the toothbrush have become permanent parts of my routine. They are basically part of, part of what, I, what it is uh, for, for myself to go uh, through uh, the week. And um, so it's not just an addition, but it's, it's very much part of my, the ecology, ecology of my life, not only as a human being, a solitary human being, but also part of part of society at large, because you also have access to computers and without those computers uh, or without your computers, you wouldn't have access uh, to me. So again, that computer or the cell phone or whatever it may be is uh, becomes part and parcel of your life or the, the fabric of, of your daily routine. And idea number five is that technology becomes mythic. And by mythic, it does not mean mythology here, but by mythic, it means that technology uh, becomes, takes on the status of something that has been given to us by gods. In other words, something that has been here for the longest time or since the beginning of time. So if you ask someone, you know, uh, who invented the alphabet or, uh, um, you know, who invented the plane. We have been, we have become so accustomed to flying. We have been so accustomed to driving cars. We have been accustomed to using cell phones and computers. Um, you know, some generations of students uh, who are in their, you know, early, late teens or early twenties have been uh, born into a world with cars, with cell phones, and with airplanes, and with the internet, and with computers, so they don't know a world without them. So to them, it seems that the world has always had computers, cell phones, cars, and airplanes, and they can't really imagine their lives without them. So that, that's what it means for a technology to have the status of being mythic. Now, one of the problems with the status of being mythic is that we don't necessarily critique or criticize uh, a given technology because we think that it's been here since the beginning of time, therefore uh, that's, that's the way it should be. But that is not a critical position, that is just a complacent and a lazy position. So that's, in a nutshell, that's the article, but uh, you are required to read through it because there's a lot more here uh, than what I have just uh, said. And um, divide, ideally divide your presentation into five students and then each student will, will be responsible for, for explaining and analyzing and applying each idea. All right, so I hope this is helpful. And once you get into groups, uh, decide who is going to do which idea and start uh, creating your, start constructing your presentation. Go to the documents that I have shown you, go over the instructions on how to turn PowerPoints into videos or how to use other technologies to create um, video presentations and the documents that I have posted for you are useful and effective. Now, <clears throat> a couple of tips when it comes to doing your presentation. You don't need to clutter your presentations or your um, PowerPoint slides, if you want to use those, with lots of text. 
you can use pictures, you can use a few words, but basically what I'm looking for is a presentation, not you reading a whole bunch of text, because reading a whole bunch of text from presentations, from slides, is not a presentation. Uh, it's, uh, it's basically just a reading exercise. So what I'm looking for is a presentation where you put down a few ideas and then you explain them, you show their relevance, you uh, go through an analysis. Okay, so that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a presentation, not just a, a, a read through your slides, because if you do so, and if that's the only way of delivering the material, then, um, then you will lose marks. Uh, when you submit your presentations, submit only one copy or one link or one document. I don't want everyone in your groups every member in your group to submit uh, separately because then that will be just disorganized and I will be, you know, quote unquote, running around on eCentennial or through the Dropbox looking for the entire presentation. So just have one person submit one document with all the names and last names and student numbers um, into the Dropbox and that's it. I also need into the Dropbox, apart from the presentation or the link to the presentation, I also need um, the text. So if you are uh, presenting slash reading from a text that you have written before or using to present, then I need that document as well. And also make that into one document, okay? so that I can run it through, run it for, run it through turnitin.com for, for plagiarism. So again, each, uh, each group will submit one document that is the presentation or one link to the presentation and one document which is basically, uh, which, will, which repre will, will represent all the ideas that have been put into uh, doing uh, or presenting or performing your presentation, that is. Um, I think that's it. Uh, so I will be tomorrow online during office hours and then again on Tuesday from 11 to 12 if you have any more, any additional questions. But uh, if you haven't uh, signed up for a group, then do that as soon as possible. And once you get into a group, look for the students in your group um, under class list and get in touch with them as soon as possible. Uh, you can uh, communicate over email or you can create a Google Doc uh, that can be shared with all your group members or where you can basically um, play around with ideas or post ideas and uh, your work uh, that can be easily exchanged uh, with uh, your group members. So Google Docs uh, works fairly simple and you can use that to, to, um, to use one shared virtual space as, um, as a workshop for your presentation. All right, I think this is uh, this will be instructive and helpful. And if you have more questions, then uh, please use email and and uh, office hours. All right, thank you, and I'll uh, talk to you soon. Bye bye.